Greetings and welcome to Austin, Texas Gardening. I'm your host, Matthew Watrich, and today we're going to be doing a backyard garden tour for the month of July. So as you've seen in some of my previous videos, I live on a very urban setting, uh, suburban setting, perhaps. I have 640 square feet of backyard gardening space to work with here. It's not a whole lot, but it is mine, and I have a lot of fun. I've been doing container gardening, I guess just technically urban gardening in this suburban setting, and uh, I have a, a tiny little backyard orchard. I definitely think this counts. This is my peach tree, which I've been growing peaches on for a while. We're gonna be taking a look at a whole lot of really interesting things today, but I wanted to start here. So we're getting really close to a peach harvest. As I panned over a moment ago, these peaches are getting pretty big now. I don't know what kind of peach tree this is. I have a La Feliciana peach tree in my other garden bed, and you've probably noticed here I have this vine that's climbing on my peach tree. I don't necessarily think that this, this is a good idea. I've had a lot of people point out that uh, the weight for my cucumber vine that I have climbing up this peach tree is going to cause branches to snap and other sorts of problems. And to be honest, I kind of agree. I think it's a cool concept, but there's a reason that horticulturists don't do this. I think that uh, it was a fun experiment, but I'm getting ready to cut it down and harvest my peaches at the same time. So keep an eye out for the peach harvest video that's coming up. But like, for example, I'm already having these problems. Here is, these peaches aren't that big. Again, this is my hand for scale and I'm getting stuff like that. So this is the first branch that's broken in this way. And I have a ton load of peaches on this tree. This turned out super successfully. I'm super excited. Like, let me set this down real quick. Check this out. That's a big peach. That's a big boy. Looks great. I'm gonna do a whole peach harvest video and get some cobbler or something. I think some of these peaches are, are almost ready to eat. Like this right here, this is that little branch that was breaking off just a moment ago. Mmm, that's good. I'm surprised at how good that is. That's, that's ready immediately. We're gonna take those inside. I'm gonna snack on those later today. But the bottom line is this, our peach tree is absolutely lovely. I, there are a lot of problems with it though. I, one of the biggest things is my pruning last year, I didn't even think about this, but I know the light balancing might not be great. There are peaches 10 feet off the ground, 12 feet maybe even. Like I'm looking straight up right now. And again, I assume the light balancing's bad, but there are peaches up there, up there. I'm gonna have to build some sort of some sort of uh, scooper. I was gonna say a pooper scooper. I'm not gonna use a pooper scooper for my fruit tree, but I'm going to need something. I've seen people do like a water bottle on a stick where you can kind of like hook the fruit. I'm gonna figure something out. Stay tuned to see what I wind up doing in my peach harvest video. But uh, moving on from the peach tree, this is my patio. So up until maybe about a month or two ago, uh, not even that, just just like three three weeks, honestly. I had all these containers on my patio and my container's kind of over in that back corner now, but I cleaned it up quite a bit. I think it looks a lot better. This gives my wife and I an opportunity to sit out on our patio and actually enjoy it. And we're joined by these two avocado seeds, which I've regrown. They're doing really great. You would actually assume this one here is the older one, but this one's only about three months old and it's just thriving. I think it really likes being in this corner. I have it in this large container, which I've done measurements before. I think it's 45 liter container. Um, it's 15, 15.6 inches tall, if memory serves. And it's a cylindrical container, uh, 15 inches deep. Really cool for growing these avocado seeds. And this one is the avocado seed, which I regrew in one of my first videos on November the 4th. It's still kicking, survived the winter. It lost its leaves because I didn't have a proper grow light for it in my garage, but this year we're gonna make sure it gets situated well. Hopefully uh, we can get some more height on this, this little tree here, this little sapling. You can tell like, I mean, if you look under these leaves there, all those dark spots are where the old leaves used to be. And so when you look at those side by side, the one on the right looks younger, but it's actually older and just a bit more punished. So. That brings us to our next couple of things. I have, um, at this point, I uploaded the video on the banana trees today, but if you're, today is Monday, uh, so you're probably watching this on Friday. This is my banana tree. 
it's doing great. I, of course, as I mentioned in my banana video, I would appreciate any type of feedback, support, comments, um, any constructive criticism or helpful tools that anybody's used to grow banana trees in Central Texas. This one's about, it's kind of hard to show for scale, but my fence is six feet tall. So maybe like two and a half feet tall. And it's still really tiny. I figure that this uh, banana pup, banana sapling, I don't know what to call it, survived the winter storm. So it couldn't really need that much care, but we'll see. And I'm also growing this sunflower. I, it's, it's really droopy and it looks sad and looks cursed, but actually it's ready for a sunflower seed harvest coming up here in a little bit, which I might make a separate video on. I've been told that you wanna wait until these leaves get yellow and really start dropping. And you'll see here, here's our very sad looking sunflower head. But if I peel back a bit, yeah, underneath those flowers, I know this must be horribly out of focus. Let me dust away some of that. There are seeds. And I'm not sure that they're ready yet, to be honest with you. If I pull back here, what do I get? Let's see. That, that looks sort of ready. I think I want to let these guys size up a bit for a little while longer, but that's how sunflower seeds are grown. It's super simple. Looks very cool. So normally I like to do my videos. I'm going to just toss those down. I, again, that's going to be a whole separate video. I don't want to get into that too much right now. This whole video, this garden tour is getting to be a little bit disjointed because I wanted to talk about both of my fruit trees at the same time. I'm not going to count the peach trees that are out here, but like you can see from just this one branch that there's probably a dozen, dozen peaches there. My other peach tree, which is much smaller, is over here. It's a La Feliciana peach tree and it grew three peaches this last spring. Those peaches are no longer on the tree because I noticed they started dropping a little while back and I brought them inside, cut them up and ate them. They were great and I thought it turned out super well. I just, uh, it being a smaller tree, this tree is maybe about two years old. It was really tiny when I got it uh, back in March of 2020. And three peaches, I think, is pretty good for a tree of this size. By comparison, this is probably five, six feet. I think it was two years old when I got it. So coming up on four years old and over there, that tree. Uh, I, I don't think my friend who I transplanted it from, uh, Parker, I don't think he knew how old it was. And it's obviously really big and due for a pruning. I think that uh, it's very successful now, but if it is not pruned back, more in the future, I'm not sure it will be able to get enough uh, uh, get enough nutrition from the soil to sustain itself and sustain uh, this much fruit. And so, I um, hmm, I'm deciding if I how I want to cut up this video because I realize there's something I still haven't addressed with this peach tree. I have all sorts of little like black spots on my peaches. I'm not sure if these are bruises from perhaps hummingbird pecking or something else, but I've cut into a couple of these pieces of fruit and they're not deformed or anything. I'm not sure it's a really big deal. It might be some sort of fungus or something else. Like this one is a little bit grayer than for example, these here. Either way, uh, the biggest problem I've been having, I kind of panned over to this branch earlier, but I didn't get into talking about it quite a bit. Do you see how it looks like there's some slime on this peach right here? A much better example, I think. Um, I've noticed something that looks like jelly on some of these peaches, and it's not really apparent on any of these, but I know I'm going to find one. Um, let's see. might cut this part of the video down a tad. This is kind of an example of what I'm talking about. This is dried up at this point, but I've learned there are kind of peach moths, which are predatory and excrete some sort of jelly on these peaches, which digests the peach. And then they come back and suck up the digested material. I guess this one has a little bit on it too. So that's one of the predators that I've had a problem with, but that's really it. Our peach trees have been doing great and I'm super super pleased with that. So with that, I'm going to talk a little bit about this garden bed that I have over here. Fingers crossed for this bed. I really don't know what's going to happen with it. I am trying to grow pumpkins in it. 
And so I made a video about planting those pumpkin saplings recently. And you can see here, they're doing pretty well. I mean, they're starting to put out some leaves. I obviously, until this is a little more established, I'm not say that I can, I don't think I can say that it has been successful, um, but they are doing well. And it's nice to see that. I've been told by a whole bunch of different people that I need to watch out for squash beetles, um, vine borers, which I'm not sure if those are, you know, they sound like worms, um, some type of uh, some type of predator that unless you take super serious pesticides to, you're not going to get anything. So I don't know that these pumpkins will be successful. Fingers crossed. Obviously, my September garden update would be the one to check to see how they do. So over here in our corner, we also have something really cool. My vegetable garden bed. We have, uh, well, the strawberry plants actually putting out strawberries in July. I was afraid it would get burned up from the heat, but you can see it's still got flowers down there. It's still producing small fruit. And uh, thankfully, the cool thing about growing strawberries in July is that, I mean, these are a little malformed. I don't know if it's because of a nutrition type of thing, but the cool thing is that there are no slugs because it's too hot for them. They all get burned up by the heat and uh, that makes my gardening experience a lot easier. So with that, uh, the other thing that I wanted to show over here is my habaneros. I have these two little habanero plants and they're doing great. I feel like they have some habaneros that have been failing a bit. I'm not sure what these are diseased with. If you know, please let me know in the comments. It looks like some sort of fungus or something, but we're gonna get rid of those. What we want are, oops, oops I realized this is another bad one here. I don't know what kind of predator it might be or what kind of um, fungus might be messing with these, but these are very much ready to pick. It's very difficult to film and also pick these with one hand, but I've been growing these for a while and I'm gonna be super careful not to touch my face. As I'm sure you guys are aware, habaneros are really, really hot and it's like pepper spray if you accidentally wipe the sweat out of your eyes after touching these. But we've gotten quite a bit. They've been growing here since I think probably about January. You can see here, I might have to come back and grab the rest of these. Come on. There we go. That's a lot. They look great. I'm thinking when we finally do pick these peaches, I'm going to make some sort of a spicy habanero peach jam or something. That looks wonderful. That's, an, <laughs> that's a very great July harvest. Peaches and habaneros. Love it. Moving on. I'm not exactly sure at this point what I'm going to do with my celery. These are, this is the remnants of my winter garden at this point. I understand that celery seeds have some sort of culinary purpose. I couldn't really decide if I wanted to make a video on them or not, but basically the little white flowers that were on the celery a few months ago are now celery seeds. And if I kind of pull at these brown parts, you definitely can't see that in the video because I know my GoPro doesn't do focusing well, but there's some really tiny little seeds here that taste like bitter soap and have some sort of culinary purpose. At any rate, this is my new container gardening corner. You can tell from the crop circles here that I've been moving these containers all over the place. I originally had all of these right here and the problem I discovered is that rain will wash off the top of my roof and direct impact on the containers and displace soil and also just get all the, the crud, bird poop, etc., off the roof into the containers, which I don't want. So I've been moving them around. I really need to build a stand for them, but I just know that we want them not on our patio. Uh, over here in the corner is better than on the patio because at least we can use our patio. But. Uh, I'll just go left to right and talk about what we got. So these two containers are really obviously sweet potatoes here. I did a sweet potato video a while back and uh, it wasn't super successful to be honest, but I have a lot more high hopes for this one. You can see the potato end that I planted there. And over here, I planted a handful of slips. It's kind of hard to tell because I know the light balancing must be off with the sun coming out, but they look like they're all doing great. I'm sure if I tip the buckets over and look at the bottom here, you can see roots sticking out of the drain holes. You know that they have roots filling up the entire container and are doing awesome. 
Another one of my recent videos was transplanting pineapple crowns. So my pineapple crowns are outside in their containers and it looks like some of their color is starting to fade. I hope that's not this one here. This one is doing awesome. And these pups, I did have some folks comment and confirm. I need to twist off these new pups that are coming out of this pineapple crown. It looks like the cold weather. Uh, I planted this in July, for the, or sorry, January for the record. And I think the winter storm, I did bring it inside, but I think it was just so shocked by the change in temperature. Cause it was getting pretty cold even in our house with the, with the winter storm. Uh, it just decided to go into its reproductive cycle. And so that's why it has these new pups growing off the side. So we're gonna cut those out and, or pull those off rather, twist them off and put them in containers at some point in the future. But I'm just trying to keep these watered. I know they are tropical plants and the temperature out here is getting super crazy lately, but uh, they're doing well. So I will keep updating on the status of those. And then of course, these are the banana pups from the video that I just posted. They're doing great. I think it's gonna be a long time before anything too interesting happens over here. But basically the, the bottom line is banana root balls are super fertile and put off banana shoots of new trees really easily. So I'm not sure if I'm gonna pull up these pups and give them away when these trees get larger, but we'll just have to wait and see. And finally, as I pointed out with the habaneros, I have some habaneros in a container. These are ripening up and they're starting to look pretty cool. I, uh, somebody's driving. Oh, that's a helicopter. I just decided I'd wait for the helicopter to pass because it was super loud. But anyway, as I mentioned, this is my habanero container. It's great. Nothing in here has actually uh, matured yet, but as you can see, the color is kind of changing on this one here, and I'm excited to see what happens with that. And finally, this is my Yukon Gold potato container. So the same way that I've been growing the sweet potato slips in containers, I planted three Yukon Gold potatoes in April, which means it's been May, June, July. That's coming up on three months here in maybe about a week or two. And so I read online that these grow in three to four months. I planted the potatoes down here in the bottom third of the container, topped it off with soil. It looks like it's doing wonderfully. And you can see from the wither up here that I think it's about time to harvest. So keep your eyes peeled for more potato bucket gardening. I think growing potatoes in buckets is so easy and really cool. You can really see the roots are stretching out there and down at the bottom. I wanna avoid tipping this over completely. Pretty high hopes for this. Obviously, I don't know if any predators have made their way into the container. It wouldn't surprise me if the potatoes have fungus on them or some sort of other issue, but we're gonna keep our fingers crossed for that. So I make these videos to just demonstrate that gardening in Austin is possible. I feel like my backyard is pretty tiny and I know that this must be bigger than you might be working with if you have just an apartment balcony or something else, but I've been able to grow a huge variety of really cool different things with not a lot of resources. Obviously, I, again, my backyard is 16 feet on the short side, 40 feet on the long side. And I feel like there's space out here to, you know, enjoy and entertain and have people over. And there's also space to do really cool things like growing sunflowers or uh, this very large peach tree here. So I think it just goes to show that gardening is a hobby anybody can get into. I've said this before in other videos, but I was a computer programmer. Well, I am still. Um, before COVID started, I had no interest in, like my wife and I would go camping and hiking and different things like that, but I really didn't have interest in gardening or growing anything. And uh, the pandemic's been terrible and lockdown has been awful, but um, gardening is a hobby that I picked up during the pandemic and something I've gotten a lot of joy out of. So it's a silver lining. If you're really bored with lockdown, I think that anybody should be able to do something even just on their patio. With that, let's cut over to my front yard. All right, so I'm stepping out into my front yard and I've got to film quick because there's a ton of noise in my neighborhood, the construction that's going on. But this is my front yard garden bed. I've grown tomatoes here in the past and everything is just overgrown at this point. You can see my tomato bush is here and it's wrapped in this kind of last of us climbing vine. It's it's something that I ought to cut down, but I kind of like it. it. It flowers in the morning and I don't really have a shot of that right now, but I just decided to leave it up. I figure I'm gonna have to do a lot of cleanup here in the, in the uh, months to come any way you cut it. But I've also got a couple of pepper plants, my front yard garden bed, 
This is another habanero, which is uh, ready to bring inside. And I also grow green onions out here, rosemary and a couple of other things. But what I think is really cool is over here, this is my fig tree. And so it's a fig bush, obviously at this point, it's like two feet tall, but I'm really excited. I think in the next couple of weeks, we're gonna start to get some figs down here. These little buds that are forming around some of the corners of my new growth on this fig tree, hopefully will become figs. So I've had this fig tree for as long as I've had the smaller peach tree. It's a brown turkey fig tree. And I wanted to make a video on it, but I figure until it puts off some figs, I really don't care to. I don't think it'll be that helpful to just see a little bush on the ground, but fingers crossed in the next couple of weeks, it'll do something. And if you've seen my videos on winter garden frost protection, then you've seen this olive tree. It died pretty significantly during the winter storm and is regrowing a bit. I don't think I'm gonna get any olives from it this year, but you can see down here is the old stump and we have these new shoots coming off. I think it looks really great. There's not a whole lot to see in the front yard this morning. I've also got this Fuji apple tree. I could say something about it, but it's not really doing anything interesting and Fuji apple trees don't self pollinate. So it's just hanging out here. I think I eventually might get into grafting and do something else with it, but that's pretty much all I had today. I just wanted to walk around and talk about gardening, talking about my experience and also some of the things that I'm growing in the month of July. So stay tuned for future videos. I might be making a video on making jam with the habaneros and peaches, or maybe just a peach tree harvest. Uh, that should be coming out next week, but stay tuned. And thanks again for watching Austin, Texas gardening.